Okay, so day two of the rigging stuff. Um, we are, is today the 28th? Yeah, we are here, right? Wednesday the 28th, which means next class period is Friday, which is an open work day. I'll be here like I always am um, to, to help out. And I, and I have a feeling a lot of you are not quite keeping up on the rigging stuff. You're planning on going back and reworking on that. And so you'll probably hit some snags, and so Friday would probably be a good time to be asking those questions. Um, because Monday, the 3rd, um, is when I'm going to go through um, the tutorial on how to do a walk cycle. It's actually, I mean, that's a little bit of a misnomer. We're not really going to do a cycle, per se. Uh, a cycle is a character walking in place, um, and then in some other means you move it around the screen. That's how video games work. What we're going to do is we're going to have our character walk forward um, six steps. Uh, but we're kind of going to copy and paste two steps to get that six steps. Um, so it, it is in some ways a cycle. It's just a cycle with an offset. So, um, And then that means we would have Wednesday and Friday as work days. In fact, Friday is a, like, there's no class on Friday. Um, technically, we're not allowed to conduct class on Friday. Um, it is dead day or something like that. I'm going to be in the building anyway, but so as not to be misconstrued as if I'm making you come to class, I'll not be in this room, right? I'll be in my office, and if you're up here working and you have a problem, you can come get me in the office, and I'll come up here and help you, or you can come down there and ask questions. And I, but I don't want it to... I, like people have gotten trouble before by like not having class but actually still having class and I like really that's if that's the day you're like I'm caught up and I'm gonna sleep late that's cool um, but that will be the last time that I will be in the building that you will be able to ask me questions right and as some of you may have recognized Sunday night at 3 a.m. or well, I guess it's Monday morning at 3 a.m. I'm not super responsive <laughs> like I'm, I'm usually asleep by nine and a lot of times the questions are questions I can't just answer with a single sentence right it's like Maya's doing something weird I'm like I, I'm gonna have to see it to figure out what it is so plan accordingly that whole time management thing um, that means try to have as much as you can done by Friday that way you can ask me questions and then all you really have left to do that weekend is rendering um, Monday morning um, I'll show up. Uh, I think we we settled on. We settled on was it 8:30 as sort of our or 8:15 ish, 8:30. Let me look at my time. I wrote it down. Okay, I should have to send myself a gummy gift, shouldn't I? Hello, the 10th. POA. I have it listed as 8:15. Um, no, I'm sorry, 8:30. You're right. But I'm going to get here at 8:15 so we can get started at 8:30. Um, and assuming. It is at all possible. I'm going to try to swing by and grab some donuts or something like that to to just go ahead and finish this semester off. Right. So, um, so that's our schedule. You can kind of see you can plan every day until the end. Right now, I'm sure there's lots of other stuff like bearing down on you right now from other classes, but um, just wanted to kind of touch base and make sure um, everybody was in the right spot. Samira lost your ID. I will take that downstairs. Um, okay. So, uh, where we left off... Oh, uh, before I jump into where we left off last class period, I've had a lot of people asking me um, a question about how to get... Um, uh, like, let's say you've modeled your character's torso, right? And then you model an arm or a leg on one side. How do you get that arm or leg over to the other side? Um, without having to just completely remodel it. And there's a couple of tricks to this, but the easiest answer is that you're, you can scale this in a single axis. So in this case, it would be my X axis. And you'll see my scale of X is one. If I start scaling this until it's negative one, right, I basically have a mirrored version of it. Right? So there's kind of a trick to be able to do this and get it perfectly on the other side of zero, zero, zero. Um, if I just grab my left arm and hit Control G, well, actually, let me let me undo that. 
Um, I'm going to duplicate my left arm first. Control B. I'll make that my right arm. And so now I have a duplicate of it. I'm going to group that duplicate. So basically it's just going to be a single object inside of a group. So with it selected, Control G, you'll see now that that arm is inside of that group. And the arm's pivot point is still in the same spot, but the group pivot point by default goes to the origin of Maya. It goes to zero, zero, zero. So that just means if I scale that group to negative one, it will put it perfectly on the other side of that box. And so I can get a, a symmetrical version of this model. Um, now, the, the thing that's kind of a little messy is at this point, it's still inside of a group. So all I can do now is like middle click and drag that outside of the group and then delete the group. And now I just have uh, a clean set of mesh. Um, there's a, there is a tool inside of mesh called mirror. Um, some of you have seen that, uh, it's under, so I think it's under edit mesh. Was it under mesh? Yeah, mesh mirror. Now that's not necessarily for mirroring an object to the other side. That's for mirroring part of your mesh to the other side. So for example, what that's for is, let's say you were only modeling half of your, of your character's torso, right? Let's say what you had is this. and you wanted to mirror that across to the other side, that's what the mirror tool is for. So if I go to mesh mirror, um, it's going to mirror it across the world and across the X axis. Um, and so if I hit mirror now, it'll just mirror it over there. And of course, there's some tools that will allow you to tweak around with that, but usually the, the trick to having this work correctly is that this edge that you're mirroring across lines up perfectly with um, zero, 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 so. Okay, so I just wanted to cover that really quick. I know most of you are probably in the, that final stage of uh, wrapping up your modeling, um, getting started on your rigging. Um, I would say wrap up your modeling as soon as you can, um, just because the rigging and the animation is not easy. Um, my um, just reminder is to, before you start rigging, delete history and freeze transformations on your model. Um, just getting the cleanest model possible will make those second two steps go way easier. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the scene that we were working on yesterday. So I'm gonna set my project. Okay, so this is where we um, sort of left off yesterday. Um, I have created this skeleton for the character, right? You'll remember that all of this is under our rigging menu, skeleton, creating joints, all of that stuff. And it appears I have already put in my IK handles. I want to go ahead and delete those just so we can remember how to do that again. Um, so I have IK handles in here. You can barely see them. They're right there. Right? And so now I'm able to grab my character's legs and, and move them around however necessary. Um, there's still going to be some issues with that, though. And let me remind you just how to do the IK handles um, by deleting them. Um, and why we do them is because without them, my character's feet will go to the floor. Right? Like I, I can't have my character look down at his feet or her feet because she'll do that. Right? Um, so this is the difference. You'll, you'll hear people, particularly people who don't know how to animate or who have never animated, um, they think that this is rigged now, right? And they're wrong. Like, this is not a rig. This is a skeleton. This is a series of deformers. A rig is something that allows you to control these deformers in a way that lets you animate, right? 
Like the last thing you want to do is be worrying about technical problems at the same time as trying to get a performance out of a character. Um, how many of you so far are kind of liking the rigging part of this? Anybody? One person. That's that's about the right percentage, actually. <laughs> like, um, a lot of people just just hate the rigging part, right? It's very tedious. It's very technical. Um, but some people actually like like that's the challenge they like. Right? You like this problem solving. And so when we get this skeleton in here, we have the deformer. What a rigging artist is doing is trying to create something that an animator can interact with and, and get a performance. They're trying to create a, a good puppet. Right? Um, so um, when they're rigging, they're not thinking about this would be neat. They're thinking, how does an animator want to work? Right? Um, it's, like, it's the same way that a UI artist is thinking, how does the person want to interact with this software? A rigging artist is saying, how does an animator want to interact with this character? Right? Um, because as you'll find out in later animation classes, just getting a performance out of a character is really, really, really hard. Right? Um, so this is always a question you ask. And if that's the case, the first thing we want is we want the character's feet to always stick to the floor. Right? Unless otherwise noted, the character's feet are always on the floor. Because the amount of time you spend flying through the air is pretty minimal, right? Most of the time you're standing or you're sitting with your feet on the ground. You're doing something with your feet on the ground. Um, and so that's why we're going to use this IK tool. So again, FK is forward kinematics. Forward kinematics means as I go down my hierarchy here, from left hip down to knee to ankle to toe, as I go down those things, um, I am going to be able to control like the, the upper level uh, parts of this hierarchy control the lower level parts of this hierarchy, right? Um, so I have to go downward to, to get that pose, right? IK means inverse kinematics. It means you can choose the end effector. You can choose the thing that you want to be in control at the end, and it will control the entire chain from that end point. Again, I know I'm kind of repeating myself, but this is a refresher. It's because sometimes things need to be locked in place, right? So my hand right now is in FK mode, but if I'm holding onto this, I want it to be in IK mode because then when I move, right, my hand stays in the same place and the rest of my body can move wherever my hand will stay locked to the corner of this um, thing. So, inverse kinematics. So we're gonna go to skeleton, create IK handle. Um, what we're gonna do in the options box, we can do it in the options box or we can do it afterwards, is we need to make sure that sticky is turned on. And that basically just means that the end effector will stay stuck in place. Right? <laughs> it, it will stay in this location. So if I do sticky, um, then I can click the highest point in the hierarchy that I want. For me, that's going to be the hip, right? Um, and then the lowest point. Now, some people would pick the toe, but if you pick the toe, that means that the toe is controlling how your ankle rotates, right? We don't want that. We really just want the ankle and the hip to control how the knee rotates. Right? So if I just choose the ankle, then I get this extra IK handle right here. And you can barely see it, I'm sure, on the screen there. But it's just a, if you, if I can get to the right angle to be able to see this. It should be showing. Um, it's going to create a line. So, there we go. It creates a line straight down through the center here that connects those two points. And then the ending effector is this little ha uh, tick mark here that I can grab and move around. Now, um, something I want you to notice is this white arrow pointing forward here in the front. You see that? That's telling Maya which direction your knee is pointing or which direction the bend is pointing. Because this could also be for an elbow or it could be for a snake. Like it could be for whatever series of joints you want it to be for. Um, so if I need my character's knee to aim, there is a, let me, let me go ahead and turn my mesh back on. Um, 
there is a, actually let's leave it on four here so you can see it. So we got this arrow pointing straight forward and you'll notice that's the direction the knee is pointing, right? Um, in our IK handle, there's an option over here for twist. And when I use that, you'll see that it allows me to point my knee in a different direction, okay? So those are the things we're going to use when rigging this. So I'm gonna go ahead and name this just so I know it. It's at least put an L in front of that. Or I'm sorry, this is a right. R underscore IK handle one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create the other one. Skeleton, create IK handle. Um, where I changed it to sticky the last time, it should still be set to that. So if I click there and there, um, put that, put an L underscore in front of that. And so now I should be able to grab my character's hip control or my root control and the feet will stay pinned to the ground. Where's my mesh? There it is. Um, so my feet, or at least my ankles, stay pinned to the ground, but you're still seeing some issues with this, right? Um, because this reaction is causing the ankle to rotate, everything below the ankle is rotating too, including this ankle joint that's keeping my foot lined up. So if I needed my foot to be pointed straight, um, I could do that and it would, you know, it would, it would fix it. But that's, that's a lot of manual work. Every time I would move this, um, it would still mess up my foot and I would have to go fix it. So again, a rigging artist is trying to set up something that an animator can work with um, that will require that, that will um, require them to not have to think about all of these little things to fix, right? They just need to be thinking about making the character act, making the character obey the laws of physics. Right? So uh, there's a lot of different, there's no perfect way of rigging something. Um, I'm going to show you a relatively simple one. Um, it gets way more complicated than this. Because if you think of all of the different ways your foot can pivot, right? You can sort of roll back onto your heel. You can roll up onto the ball of your foot. You can roll up onto the toe of your foot. You can roll your foot from side to side, right? You can be on the toe of your foot and still like pivot um, in different angles. So like your foot is a really complicated object. I'm gonna give you a relatively simple one. We're gonna create a control that lets our foot stay in whatever orientation we put that control, right? So if I rotate that control in one angle, no matter what I do to the rest of the character, I can keep that foot's orientation where I put it, right? I'm gonna give you a control for that for each foot. We're also going to put um, an additional attribute on there that allows us to wiggle our toe. And the reason for that is because there's, when our character sort of takes a step, we wanna be able to like roll up on our toe. Now your character may not have a toe, your character may have like spike feet, or maybe your character has four toes. Like that's, you, you sort of built your character, I'm giving you the understanding of how to do this. Um, if you build a character that had actual like five toes, right, um, on each foot, keep in mind like, do you need your character to wiggle all five toes individually? Or do you just need all five of those toes to be controlled together like mine are, even though mine's model is one big toe, right? So, um, so basically this is going to have three controls when it's over with. It's going to have one for each foot, and it's going to have one for the main root control, okay? Where's my water? I need a sip. So as we've done in the past, I'm going to go ahead and create a circle as our control. So again, under NURBS surfaces or curves and surfaces here, um, we can click this or we can go to create NURBS primitives circle. Um, but I'm just going to create a circle. It'll appear on the ground and I'm going to scale this up until it's something that's about the right size for me to use for my character's hips. Um, now there's a lot of different ways we can get this circle to line up with our character's hips. 
I'm going to show you one of the easier ones, but there's a couple of different ones, um, including, um, I shall show you a couple of different ones of this. So one of the ways we can do it here is if I grab this control, hit W, and I've hidden my mesh, right? If I hold down V, V allows me to snap to points. A lot of people think it's for vertices, but it's not. It's points. It's any individual tick mark, right? Which means I could snap to a, um, a CV, or I could snap to um, a locator, or I could snap to the pivot point of a joint, right? So if I hold down V while I'm moving my object, you'll see it starts to snap to different joints. And I'm just going to move it up until it snaps to that top joint. Um, I want to undo that and show you another way we can do this. If I select the circle and then I hold shift and select the joint, if I go to modify, there's this match transformations tool. This is actually pretty new. Um, it's only been in Maya for a few versions. But if I go to match translation, look what it does. It just snaps it up there to that translation. Um, I could also um, do match, I'm going to break that off, I could do match rotation, and you'll see that it flips it into the same rotation as the joint. Um, and then I could do match scaling, and that would be a mistake, right? So all this is doing is it's taking those values from the other control, or from the other object, the second object you choose, and it's applying it to the first object you choose. So I can undo it and just match my translations, and it will work. Yes? This, this menu, yeah. it is under modify and then match transformations. And then I usually match the translation on this. It will move it to the same location. Now, if you do match all, it's going to put it all wonky. So now before I go much further, um, I want to do something that's, that's pretty important here. Um, I want to name this. And that's again, because like, this is going to get complicated like this is this there's just going to be so many objects for you to deal with in rigging um just name them i know it takes a couple of seconds to do that but it will be worth it so i'm going to go ahead and name this um and we'll call it root c i'm sorry ctrl for control and that way i see anytime i see the ctrl at the end of this i know it's a controller right the other thing I want you to notice is that um, my numbers in my channel box are all wonky now, right? Like, it's not zero, 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 and the scale is bigger, and all of that stuff. And, and I know, like, it's easy to say, so what? Um, and rigging is actually really important. And the reason for that is because my character, my character's default pose, the pose the character was in before I, I skinned it, right? Is important. It's important to be able to get back to that pose, right? Sometimes you're animating on something and you're like, "Ah, oh, this is terrible. I need to just start over." But I saved over my file, and I don't know how to get my character back to the bind pose because its bind pose is eight point three five zero point zero two seven, right? You didn't memorize that, um, but you can memorize zero zero zero, right? Um, so we're going to freeze our transformations on this control. Um, modify, freeze transformations. The reason for that is like, let's say, you know, I'm animating all over the place. I get my character way over to here and I'm like, wait, I want to, I want to start over. All I have to do now is type in zero on all of those and it goes back to where I started, right? Um, this is called zeroing your character out. Right, like you, you, you'll hear people say it all the time: zero it out and start over. Right, or zero it out to get back to a neutral pose. Um, so this is this is an important thing to remember to do. Um, I, I've I've helped people in the past where they've forgotten to do this step, and again, like kind of my my answer is, well, delete it and start over then, because that's the only way we can get it back to that. Like if you mess it up and you have to delete your skinning and reskin it. When you delete your skinning, your character is going to go back to its default pose, but your rig's still going to be in a different pose. So you'll have to re-rig it. Yes? Um, no. So the skeleton, it, the skeleton has numbers on it. And we can, on, on, in some cases, 
we can freeze transformations on stuff. Let's see if I let me do it here. Modify freeze transformations. Yeah, it can't because there's things that are being controlled by it. Um, there are times that we, there are times that you can zero out certain things um, in a skeleton, but that's another reason that we're using a control rig is because if you zeroed out everything on this skeleton, all of your bones would just be in a pile at the very center of your, your scene, right? Um, so, yes? Well, I'm trying to zero it out my model and it's just not zeroing out the I think I might need to re scan it. Uh, but I think you're trying to zero out a joint. Oh, that's what I'm doing. Okay, just grab the control. I'm, um, I'm like trying to mess with the buffer here. Connect to the studio. Oh, I, I have it. I mean, I snapped it there, but I haven't connected it. It's not a drop yet. So again, um, I have this uh, circle in place, but it's not connected yet, right? Um, in fact, if I if I move this, you'll see the circle's moving, but it's not controlling the skeleton yet. So I'm going to kind of open up a new version of Maya to talk about how we're going to do this. Um, so to connect these together, we're going to use a new thing that we haven't really used before. Um, and it's called a constraint. So I'm going to create two spheres and a cube. Okay. Raise this up a little bit. So we have two spheres and a cube. Right, um, and let's say uh, open up my attribute or my outliner here. Let's say I wanted this first sphere to control this cube. Um, we've really kind of already recognized that if I just drag this p cube one on top of p sphere one, it will make it a child of it. Right? It's kind of like nesting something in a folder. Right? So if I middle click, drag p cube one on top of p-sphere 1. Now p cube 1 is a child of p-sphere 1. And if I move p-sphere 1, it goes with it. Of course, I can still move this by itself, but this is still going to go with it. Um, the problem with that is that required me to change the hierarchy of objects. Right? Um, and sometimes that's, uh, that's, that's not an option. Right? So for example, let's say I wanted, I want to undo that where it's not a, a child anymore. Let's say I wanted both of these spheres to be able to control this box, right? Like that's not, I, I can't, it can't be a child of both of them, right? It, I can't drag this P cube one underneath both spheres. Um, so that's where we're going to use a constraint. So if we go to modeling, I'm sorry, if we go to rigging, it's also usually under the animation menu. There's this constrain menu. So let's look at it really quick. Under constrain, we have parent, point, orient, scale, aim, and pole vector. Um, we're really only going to worry about a few of these. Okay. So let's start with orient. What do you think orient controls? Requiring you to use your morning thinker. So think of like the orientation of something. Anybody? Need to give you this one. Sorry, what? So you think so? That's like the, that would be more like the origin. But yeah, or, um, I, I can see where you're where you're coming from there. Orientation also means like the rotation of it, right? Like how is it sort of twisted around in space? Um, I don't know why it's not just called a rotation constraint. You'd think that would make more sense. Um, but an orient constraint means it's going to control just the rotation of this cube. Right? So again, let's, let's do this. If I, hold, if I select the sphere, select the cube, I can never remember the order, so I have to test it. And I hit orient constraint. You'll see that now my cube has these blue channels in the rotations, right? Now I can move my, my sphere around, it doesn't affect it at all, 
But when I rotate my sphere, that cube will do exactly the same thing, all right? So an orient constraint just constrains the rotation channels of the second object you choose. Um, you'll also notice that pcube2 now has this constraint parented underneath it. So if you decide you want to get rid of that constraint, all you have to do is delete that, right? And now pcube2 doesn't have a constraint. So if point controls, or if orient controls the rotation of it, what do you think point controls? What's that? Instead of rotating, it's like the, the, like the movement of it? Yeah. So point constraint controls the translations, right? So this is going to look weird, but if I select the first one, select the P cube, and hit point constraint, watch what happens to it. It seems to disappear. It didn't disappear. It just went inside of my sphere. Because everywhere I move my sphere, that P cube is going to go to. Right? Let's undo that so I can show you something else. Under that point constraint, if I go into my options, I can choose to maintain offset, which means it will just control the translation of it with it distanced from the center of the sphere. Right? So if I click maintain offset and hit add, it doesn't look like anything changed, but you'll notice in my cube, the translates are blue now, meaning they're being controlled by the sphere. And so if I move the sphere, the cube goes with it. But if I rotate the sphere, nothing happens. Okay? So these are just different ways you may want to be able to control your objects. Now parent constraint is going to work pretty much just like parenting an object will. The only difference is it won't control the scale. Or will it? No, it won't. Um, so if I select this object, select this cube, and hit parent, right, now my, my cube both has translate and rotate information or, or controls on it. So when I move it, it moves it like that. And when I rotate it, it rotates it like that. Okay. Um, but you can see that if I, I scale it, oh, I guess it does. I guess scale will at least control... It doesn't make the cube get bigger, it just changes the distance it is away. So that means my, um, my P-Sphere 1 is controlling the translates and the rotates of this box. Here's where this gets really powerful. My P-Sphere 2 can as well. Right? So if I select it and then select the box, Keep in mind, this box is already constrained to the other sphere, right? And I hit parent again. Now when I move this sphere, you'll see that both are kind of controlling it ha like partially, right? And if you go look at the box, if you look at this constraint here, you'll see that I have a weight between those two. Both of them are controlling it equally. P-sphere 1 and P-sphere 2 are set to 1. If I set this to, let's say, 0.1, right, then P-Sphere 1 doesn't control it as much as P-Sphere 2 does. Right? So there's some like weighting things we can do there to, to change which one is in control of it. Why this is important is because sometimes you need your character holding something in one hand, and you need them to be able to pass that to the other hand. Right? Um, and you don't want to have to manually keyframe every point that the location is in. So constraints are really powerful. Uh, they're a little overwhelming because they can get a little confusing on how to switch stuff. Um, we're going to use them on their simplest level. I just wanted you to understand what they are. So what I'm going to do, uh, when this closes down, I'll just go here. what I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain my root joint to my root control. Okay? So I select the control first. Um, sometimes the, the move handle will get in your way. So if you hit Q just to go to select, it sort of hides it. And if I hold Shift, I can select my root. 
and I'm going to go to constrain and I'm going to choose parent because I want to be able to not only move it but rotate it as well. So if I choose parent, now what happens is whenever I move this circle, my character's root goes with it. Which really means, if you think about this, it really means I can hide this entire skeleton by the time we're done here, right? If I hid this entire skeleton, all I have is this to control it and it's, it's working, right? So again, the skeleton is not part of the rig. The skeleton is just the deformer. The rig is going to be these controllers that allow us to do whatever we want to do with it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put another controller down here on this foot. I'm going to do it just from scratch again, just so you sort of remember how this works. Um, so I'm going to go to create a nerd circle, right? Go ahead and hide my mesh again. I'm going to scale this up a little bit because I want it to be big enough to select and big enough to see. Right? And then I can hold down, when I'm moving it, I can hold down V and that will allow me to snap it to the ankle. Or, as I showed you earlier, we can select the circle, select the joint, and I can go to modify, match transformations, and match the translation. Now again, I don't want to match the rotation. I'll show you why. It's because if I if I matched my rotation, it would put it like that, and that's not really how I want it to be oriented. Right? I want it to kind of be oriented to the floor. That way, I know whenever I've I've sort of rotated this in the right way, um, that it's um. All right there we go. When I've rotated this the right way, that it's that my foot should be flat. Right when I zero this out, my foot should be flat on the floor. Now again, I got a whole bunch of extra numbers on here I don't need. Modify, freeze transformations to zero those out. And I'll call this L underscore foot CTRL. Okay. Um, this gets a little more complicated. So. The reason I showed you all three of those constraints is because I need to be able to use all three of those constraints, right? Um, I, need, um, I need to constrain different things to this controller for the foot to work correctly, right? So the thing I need to translate right, is the IK handle, this LIK handle one, right? I want to be able to move that around. But the thing I need to control the rotation of is the joint, the left ankle joint. Okay, so that means I want to do a parent. I'm sorry, a point constraint to the IK handle, and an orient constraint to the left ankle joint. Okay, so point to the IK, orient to the um, joint. So I'll, I'll do that again. Just I'll, I'll do it just so you can sort of see the process. Select the control first. One of the bigger um, problems that people run into this is they select them in the wrong order. It's whatever you select second is the thing that is going to be controlled, right? Whatever you select first is the thing that is going to control it. Okay. So you select the controller first. Hold Shift. Select the IK handle. Constrain, I'm going to point constrain this because I want the location of that to match my controller. So you'll see that if I move this, now I can move the control and the IK follows it. But the foot is still going to the floor, right? Like the foot is still like staying in that orientation. And I think more importantly, like when I, when I move my character's hips down, the toe goes to the floor. Right. So to stop that from happening, I need to um, control the rotation of that ankle joint. Right. So we're going to do that with an orient constraint. Now I'll show you how to do it wrong first because this is this this happens. If I just grab it, select the joint, and go to constrain orient, it's going to rotate that joint 
to the same rotation axis as my controller. All right, so I get that. So I don't want to do that. What I'm going to do is select the control, hold shift, select the joint, constrain, orient, and I want to go to my options box and make sure maintain offset is checked. Okay, And then I'll hit add. And so you'll be able to see the difference of what's happening between each foot now. One is staying like perfectly where I put it. The other one's going to the floor. Could you show that again? I will. I'm, I'm actually just going to do the whole other foot. Um, so, so again, um, I'm just going to use this control as my uh, other foot control. I'm just going to hit control D to duplicate it. Again, please, 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 please never control C, control V. Right, that, that makes a mess. So control D, now I have a second foot control. Um, I can sort of align it over here by going to modify, match transformations, match translations. Right? Now when I did that, it screwed up my numbers in here. So I'm going to freeze the transformations in that, modify, tr freeze transformations. So everything is zeroed. And I'm also going to go ahead and rename this so this is my right foot. Okay, so here goes the, the constraints again. This is currently not controlling anything. It's just, a, it's just a circle in space, right? So the first thing I wanted to control is the location of my IK. So I select the control, hold shift, select the IK, the IK handle as well down here if you can see that. And then I'm going to go to constrain and point constrain it. Point because I just want it to control the translation, not the rotation, the move, not the rotation. Okay. And so now it should still control, it'll control the, the location, but not the rotation of the foot. Right? So to control the rotation of the foot, I will select the control, hold shift, select the joint, not the IK, but the joint, constrain, orient, my options box, maintain offset needs to be checked, and I hit add. And so now, both of my feet will stay in place. So, we're really close to done here. Um, the last thing I want to have on this and this is just my rig. Your rig may have other things too, right? Um, the last thing I want to have on this is a, um, I want to have a, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, I want to have the toe move, right? So I can move the toe by moving the joint, right? Like if I just grab this toe joint and rotate it, my character's toe will wiggle, right? Um, but the problem right now is that it, when I'm animating my character walking and they push back, I want to be able to rotate that toe back up so it will stay level with the floor, like this, right? Um, and so what I'm going to do, like there's a, like I said, foot, foot rigs can be very complicated. Um, I, I kind of opted for you working just a touch harder on the animation. That way you don't have to work quite as hard on the rig. Right. So we're going to make this one pretty simple. I'm just going to make a channel in my foot control that controls the wiggle of the toe. The other thing that occasionally we need, you may not need this, but let's say my character's foot is up in the air and I want her knee to kind of be pointing outward. If I rotate my foot, her knee doesn't go with me. Right. Um, so I want an extra control on there that controls the direction the knee is pointing. Right? And if you'll remember, that's on our IK handle and this twist control. Right? So I'm going to add two attributes to each of these controls that give me more control for what I want to do on my character. So I'm going to go to Modify, Add Attribute, and I will just call this Toe, hit Add, and knee and hit add. Now, 
you already know how to do this. Like you may have forgotten, you can always go back and look at it again. But this one's pretty, like, we, we've done this before. This is the same way we hook the squash and stretch to the control for our bottle, all, all of that stuff. So I'm just going to connect these attributes to the thing I want to control. On my toe, I want to control the rotate Z axis on this toe, right? So that's Windows, General Editor, Connection Editor. So it automatically loaded in my foot control because I had it selected. If it didn't, you just select the foot control and hit reload left. The other thing I want to control is the toe. So I would grab the toe joint and hit reload right. So the thing on the left will control the thing on the right. So I go down here to that very last thing I created, toe, and I choose it. And then on the right side, I scroll until I find rotate. Rotate will be grayed out. So I have to expand that. Which rotate was it again? If you forget, you can always rotate this to see. And it's Z. So rotate Z. And so now I have this control that wiggles my character's toe. Now, to make it control the aim for my knee, I'm just going to reload my right with the IK handle. So I can select the IK handle and hit reload right. I'm going to choose knee. I'm going to find twist. Right there it is. When I hit twist, now this controls the knee. And so that means with this control, I can pretty much get my leg into whatever orientation I need it. Get my knee pointed over there. I can rotate my toe up and down. Right? And I can do all of that just on this one object. Okay? This is a rig. This, this, is, uh, this is something that you now can forget about all of those joints, all of those IKs, all of that crap. You can even forget about the modeling, right? Lock all of that. The only thing you animate are those three controllers, right? That is your entire puppet for this character. Which means if there's something else you need to animate, some of you have arms, or well, all of them. Some of your characters have arms, right? Some of your characters may have, like, bobbles on their heads. Some of your characters may have, like, I don't know, like, missiles. Like, I don't know what your character has. That means any extra thing that needs to be animated, we have to solve those problems one at a time, right? And sometimes those problems are easier to solve than you might think. Um, also, I want to show you why this is so convenient to rig this way. is because now, if I zero out this... And this, my character is back at the bind pose, right? That's why we freeze our transformations. Okay, so let's just say I got this um, adorable little bow here, right? And I want to be able to animate it spinning around, right? Um, so this is just something I'm going to add on just as an example of other things that you can rig, right? Um, or another example is maybe I want to be able to make my character blink. Right? There are different things that we could add controls for that allow us to do that. Right? So, for example, the, the blink one may be a little easier to, to control. As it is right now, the eyes are skinned to this joint. Right? Meaning everywhere that that joint goes, the eyes will go too. Right? Well, I'm going to go ahead and unskin those. I could go to skin, unbind skin, and since my character is in the same position it was when I started rigging it, like those just go back to their default pose, right, their default location. But now when I move this control, they don't go with the head, right? There are other ways I can make those objects go with the head. They don't have to be skinned, right? So, for example, I could just grab these eyes and drag those underneath the root joint. Right? So I can just drag that underneath root. And so now, whenever I move this, 
the eyes still go with it, right? And if I wanted to make this character blink, I could just add an extra attribute on my root control, right? I could go to modify, add attribute, we'll do li add r i add right? and I can now just control the scale to control the blink right? um, so let's let's go ahead and hook one of those up really quick and I can just show you um, Windows general editor connection editor and I'm going to grab this eye. This is my actual left eye. Um, and I'll say left eye controls. Oh my. Numbers on that are actually pretty wonky. Let me go ahead and freeze the transformations on those. Modify, freeze transformations. So um, I need to be able to scale this in the x axis. So I go to scale x, and you're going to see that because this is automatically set to zero, it's going to completely close my character's eyes. So if I do the same thing over here, reload right, right eye, scale x. But that means if I need to make my character blink, now I can just grab these two controls and I get some blink um, information for it. And if I just go ahead and set those to one, it will, um, it will keep the eyes open, right? So, again, I, everybody's rig is going to be different. That's why it's really pretty important over the next couple of days that we, that you're here asking questions, not like three o'clock in the morning trying to figure it out by yourself. Rigging can get complicated. Um, you utilize the, uh, the, the tutor. It's usually David who's here. I think it's Wednesday or Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Is he still here? Y'all able to meet with him? Anybody had any encounters with him? No? All right. Well, um, if you do need help and, and they're not here, let me know. Um, but they should be here, on, or David should be here Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night. And I think Brianna's here on the weekend, so. All right. Questions? Last thing I'm going to do, all of this rigging, or all of this uh, skeleton stuff, I don't want to see it. Like, that's that's just in my way. I'm going to accidentally select it and do something stupid with it, right? Um, I'm going to grab all of my skeleton. I'm going to grab these two IK handles. Uh, nope. And I'm just going to hide them. So control H. I don't want to see them. Right? And I don't need to see them. Oh, there goes the eyes. Um, <laughs> so, so that's one of the reasons that constraining them isn't always the best idea. Um, eh, that sucks. I think what I can do is add that to a new layer. I'll call this joints. Save. Now when I hide that it'll disappear but then I can add these to a new layer. Don't. Um, <laughs> okay uh, that, that, that was that I kind of winged it with the eyeballs and that's why that messes it up. Um, if you the only reason it's doing that is because they're parented underneath this joint. You could parent constrain them and it would still kind of work. Um, instead of parenting them. Another way you can hide all of this joint stuff though, and this is this is a way that I often work, is it's not that I want to hide it, it's just I just don't want to see it and select it, right? Which sounds like the same thing, but basically I can, it can still be visible, I can just say don't show it to me in this viewport, right? So under show, I can set this to none, and then go back to show and say just show me the NURBS curves, and just show me the polygon objects, okay? And that means all that stuff is still here. And actually, if I even had a second window, you can even see it in these other windows, right? 
I just don't see it in my perspective window where I'm animating. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. If you didn't parent anything, that hiding will, will work as well. Um, but we're pretty much ready to animate now. Like this is, this, this character is ready to go. Increment and save. Um, that's what we'll start on next class period. Um, again, like I, I know you all have something slightly different. Um, the rigging part is a little bit of work. So get to that as soon as you can. Um, any questions before I stop the video? Wrap this up? Yes. Okay. Yeah, let me let me check that out. It may be that you like slightly moved the rig and didn't undo that. Yeah, I think it's possible. Um yeah, that's I that's one of the things you it can be a little it's not that it's it's not that that's a, is terrible. Like you can still finish rigging it and animating it. Um it's that if you ever have to troubleshoot it and unskin it, you can't get the model back to that position. So, um but there may be a way we can we can fix it. So, any other questions? Yes. Okay, that's fine. You you can you can skin it after you've created the whole rig. I just skinned it first so you could see the results of the rig on the mesh. Like you you can skin it or unskin it at any time, and reskin it again later. So. Like if you've if you've already skinned yours and you're like oh crap I need to make some changes to the model, you would just select it, go to skin, unbind skin, make the changes to the model, and reskin it. You'll you'll have to redo any weight painting that you do on that. So that's one of the reasons. Like if you have a really complex model that's going to need a lot of skinning work, um, you'd have to do that. But it, it, was that the question or did I jump ahead of you? Yeah. All right. Um. And yeah, it is a good idea to have your UVs laid out. Um, you don't have to have the textures applied yet, but you have to have the UVs laid out just so after you move it, your textures don't crawl all over the, the character. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and upload it. And the rest of the class, which is, I guess we got about, I don't know, 45 minutes, something like that. Um, the rest of the class is yours to work or to sleep or to go get breakfast, whatever it is you do. Um, but I'll be here. So.